everyone, welcome to Listen, Love, Connect. I'm Savannah Paula Fox, your host, and today's guests are Rochelle and Chanel. We'll be talking about disabilities in color. Let's head over to them and get started. Listen, Love, Connect is brought to you by Exceptional Heroes. Um, so my name is Chanel, and I guess I'll just tell you a little bit about me. I am um, a mom of a 17-year-old son with autism. And, um, but he's uh, what's considered high functioning autism, artistic, where I'm sure you may be familiar with just, um, you know, he can do all the things everyone else does, but his biggest issue is social. Mm -hmm. um, he also can struggle sometimes with, um, well, a lot in the past with making friends and things like that. Um, learns a little bit differently. You know, he's a visual kid. Um, yeah. Some of the things I always say, kids with autism, it's like, it's like playing a game when everyone else knows the rules, but, but you don't. Yeah. So um, that's kind of been the struggle, but he's a healthy, happy teenager learning to drive, garbage permit, things like that. That's so awesome. um, yeah, so that's kind of the path that I've been on and he's my only child. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really it. His dad and I both work, you know, professionally and um, raising a teenager, so. That's amazing. Um, and then Rochelle, do you wanna? Uh, share a little bit about Sheer. Sure, sure. I'm, you know, Rochelle Jones, and um, you know, Savannah and I came to this conversation by way of the acquaintance of um, Georgie Palafox, who we worked in the same industry, and just through casual conversation, talking about um, mental mental health, right, and awareness, and especially amongst those um, of color, and. Um, I, um, I'm going to say have, um, which most would use it in the term of past tense had, um, because my nephew unfortunately passed away last year, but I um, have been directly impacted by, you know, mental health abilities, capabilities, and inabilities. Um, my nephew was born with a rare genetic disease um, that um, um, didn't allow him to function as someone his age and um, something as simple as walking. I um, mean, unfortunately, um, God called him home last year um, at the tender age of 33. So it's something that's very near and dear to my heart. But just, you know, through conversation and looking at, you know, what does um, what does that look like? Right. What does it feel like? What you know, what does it smell like? What does it taste like? And that's kind of what brought us here today. And especially how people react of disabilities with people of color and um, which can be really hard sometimes finding the help. Um, do you feel there's a disparity within the culture? For, for mental health awareness or assistance? Um, or both? both, I would say both. I, I do to, to both. I think, um, I, don't, I don't know if it's a, it could be pride, right? That, mm -hmm. um, that, um, often people are reluctant and, you know, nobody wants to wear a banner that says, you know, my son is, you know, got, you know, is different. Right. And, and I don't even really love calling it a disability because I think sometimes we focus so much on disabilities that we forget to, to recognize someone's ability because we're focused on their disability. So I don't even like using that word. My nephew spent his entire life in a wheelchair, but if you asked if he needed help, he would tell you no. And, um, and so I think that that's an example, but also as parents or as, you know, people who um, have a commitment to make sure that our loved ones are cared for and respected, I think that there comes a part where we don't talk about it um, or we disguise it. Like, you know, in my nephew's situation specifically, you know, at, you know, nine months, he wasn't holding his head up. And, you know, you know I think it was family, honestly, just see and then you know when other kids were walking and you know he wasn't you know I mean it's you're two now oh it, it, there's it's, it's always something else mm -hmm. he doesn't want to do this it's always something else and I think you know luckily because you know of shows like yours and, and awareness that we're creating that um comfort of saying it's okay it's okay that, you know, it, it's not something that someone else is not dealing with. It's okay. And so I think as that blanket continues to wrap its way around the world, we'll have more acceptance. But I think especially in um, families of color, it's hard to say my kid is different. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'd rather say that he or she is bad or just not listening, being a typical boy, being a typical girl, everything except for maybe I should get help. Do you have anything you know, to I, add? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It, it's it's something that we, you know, you know, overall, just I'll just say, you know, the term autism, I mean, I'm I'm 47 and when we were kids, you know, we I, I didn't know any, I don't even know what that word was back then. It was just, oh, they're in special education. Oh, they're slow or something like that. So just the 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 journey of of my son being diagnosed when he was six, which is which is kind of late. Um, because we just don't know, right? There is no one in my family that I could have gone and talked to like, hey, how do you handle a child with autism? There, there are no, there is no one that I knew. Um, and our journey started kind of just, my son had struggles as an infant with ear infections. Like he got ear tubes at eight months old, first mm-hmm. set, then got yeah. another set at two. And I, you know, and, and, and there's so many, um, you know, debates about what, what can cause autism and, and all those things. And, you know, the, the stories about the at vaccinations and, you know, my kid was on his, he was thrown with so many antibiotics for so long when he was in those yeah. de- developmental stages, when he was, you know, mm-hmm. not even one, we, they flooded him with antibiotics, but, you know, you go to the doctor and that's what they tell you to do. And that didn't work. And then, you know, there's twos, but, you know, so after all that, when he was around the age where, you know, he wasn't talking the way other kids, you know, you're not supposed to compare kids and all that, but you, you know, his words yeah. were like juice, like, but he was knocking on two, you know, mm-hmm. and it, just some of the things didn't seem to flow. And uh, he had a teacher who actually asked me when he was like five, if he had autism and I didn't know. And that was a whole thing. Cause you know, schools can't say this, this and that until the, all the paperwork's done and all that. So it just, my mother also kind of noticed when he was two, he was doing different things of like, you know, lining up his cars and fixations. And, you know, again, in the community, it's just, you know, oh, well, you know, what kid, what two-year-old doesn't like to, you know, line up his dinosaurs or, you know, so a lot of things were just kind of not even swept under the rug. It's just not addressed because you don't know. Um, yeah. And then as far as professionally, I mean, I'll be honest, it was a struggle in trying to figure out how to manage this, how to, what, who do you go to for help? Your doctors are very much, you know, I had great doctors that were, um, you know, great and friendly and wonderful, but I, I can't say I had this clear path of how this should be handled. And I, I can't speak to whether that's a, you know, um, you know, cultural or bias or anything like that necessarily at the same time, um, it's just been a struggle, you know? And like I said, there is no community support necessarily, but you have to hunt and find, and then you start finding other people. But overall, it's just, it, it, honestly, a very frustrating journey. Um, but, you know, he's, uh, you know, in junior in, in high school and going to, you know, progress. So it, it's just, um, you know, it's a, it's a lot there. Yeah. Why do you think there is, you, um, so there's, you didn't find any denial when people were, when your son was being first, um, being first looked at as autism, right? Denial from professionals from, or? Yeah, from professionals or anything like that. Um, when we, when we started to figure out something more was going on with him, the school, I will say the school, um, the district out here, that was, I leaned on them heavily to point me in the right direction. Um, speaking with um, my doctor, the, his pediatricians and things like that, um, I can't say I got um, a lot of direction necessarily, but the word denial, if he had it, once a school, you know, was a, you know it's, it's a cis series of testing and things they have them do and things like that. Um, once we kind of got our finger on it, mm-hmm. um, where I could find help, it was, it was, um, you know, it worked out fine. So I I don't necessarily think I had any um, issues that way, but again, you don't know, you don't quite know who to ask and how to navigate it necessarily, so. And going for resources for both uh, your cousin Rochelle or your nephew Rochelle, and then for you, did you f- find that the resources were helpful in any way? 
when you were able to find and how difficult was it to find those resources? Uh, it's a struggle. I'm still looking for resources. My biggest resources were other parents with kids with autism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just so happened, uh, my son has a also um, same thing, same grade and everything. And speaking with his mother um, was very helpful, but I know she, she did a lot of her own, you know, research on her own Google University. Um, mm -hmm. But just like, again, just going back to um, going to your doctor necessarily was just not, I didn't find a flood of resources in that capacity. Um, mm -hmm. And then just even my own research myself, I mean, you know, a books and things like that, but just, um, you know, it's different to say if someone had um, an ailment or, or, you know, cancer or something like that, there's a lot of, you know, you know what I mean? But like something like this or just any type of mental health, it, that's, it's a different, for me, it's been a different um, experience. So the research and finding information, it's, it, it's been tough. Yeah, this is one of those topics where I think that um, and, and I definitely don't want to make it, you know, a racial, but this is where I think um, as people of color, we are underserved, um, just even from education and resources perspective. The situation with my nephew, um, you know, I think if it had been, you know, someone of a different pigment that, you know, at seven and, you know, or five that he's not walking, oh, well, did you try this? Well, this option is available to you well, you can try this. It was just like, yeah, you know, he's been, um, first of all, the disease that he had was very rare. Um, mm -hmm. And so when we, when we said, you know, palisade is miles Parker, the doctor said, what? The doctor didn't know. So, and we never held them responsible because it is a rare disease and they're, they're not supposed to know everything, right? But when we explained it, um, he was commonly misdiagnosed or mistreated because of their lack of understanding themselves. But even with something as simple as not being able to walk, I think the next question is why? And then the next question is what else? Can we, can you, is there a solution? And those things were never readily available. The things that we found, it was all self-directed. And even up until his death, like um, his disease is what's called a white brain matter disease, a leukodystrophy. Okay. And so we, 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 there's a lot more research like on the East Coast about it than there is on the West Coast. And so we tried to get, we tried to tap into every possible solution, anybody that would be able to help us understand what was going on with his body and if there was anything that we could do to stop it. And there was no resources. There, there were, unfortunately, were resources for kids with this disease. Mm -hmm. But if you were older with this disease, it was, you know, and for kids because they can study them, right? And I guess the investment was we have time to study you and we can try different things, but you know, God forbid you're older with this because we don't have that. So um, I guess, you know, I might be a little bitter about it um, just because, you know, we spend money as a country on, on so many different things. And, you know, regardless, life is precious and, and we all have, you know, the same fabric makeup of, of a human. And, mm -hmm. you know, to not have that because of, you know, skin tone or any, I can't, I'd, even I'd say, you know, financial ability, you know, we're blessed to be in a position to where we have financial wherewithal, but even the people that have none, they're, they're worse off than what we, we, we got nothing and, and they're worse off with nothing. They're negative nothing. What are some of the reactions? Like, have you ever been in a scenario where you had to tell someone of, your son that is autism or um, your nephew had, what was it, white white blood, blood disease? It, it, it's um, a white brain matter. The disease itself is, um, it, it's a long word. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah, explaining explaining that they, they have a different need. Yeah, all the time yeah. for us, all, all what, the time. What were the reactions that some people might have given you or have given you? Um, I or, think, oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, I didn't I, know who you're listening to. For us, like, both of um, if, if you didn't see Michael in his wheelchair, um, then if you just looked at him, you really didn't know. Hmm. Uh, but, and there was even an instance where when he was younger, um, like maybe two or three, and we had taken him to Boston on vacation, and my cousin 
went to get him out of the back seat of the car and he he picked him up and put him on the ground and we're like no 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 you know <laughs> he just thought that he was going to stand up and we're like no 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 you know that's not the case um and i think that um and and i think an, an attribute of both um my nephew as well as Chanel's son they may they may have been given a, a different hand right but that charm and lovability, they get an extra dose of that. I don't know if it's just God's way of saying, I meant to do this, right? But they just somehow get an extra dose of that lovableness. That's amazing. And I agree. Um, you know, I, I will say with reactions with him, I mean, you know, of course, adults, you know, you tell, tell someone your son or daughter has autism. It's not like I, I haven't gotten like, you know, or anything like that. Um, but like I said, his struggles with school and things like that, he's come home many a times and it's, you know, kids are like, well, Langston, why, why are you like that? Or, mm -hmm. you know, he'll tell me stuff like that, you know, or, you know, I've had some people, you know, what's wrong with him. And so, you know, and I know my child and I know how he is and anyone, any parent with a child with Austin, first of all, there's, it's only one, you will never meet another child with autism. Who's just like that, you know? Uh, differences in the kids and the things that they do and say and you know my son has a, a wicked sense of humor and you know at first but then he he struggles with maybe you know those conversation and, and, and social cues and things like that but um, I know with kids at school even from when he was little till now it, it's he'll come home and you know different reactions of just they don't know it's autism mm -hmm. but it's always well what's wrong with you well, why are you like that well, man, what, what yeah. you, why, why would you ask that question? Like, because he's very literal, right? You know, I remember when yeah. he was little, um, I said something like, you know, oh, we can do X, Y, Z and kill two birds with one stone. He's like, mom, don't kill that bird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, not, you know, understanding idioms and things like that, you know, very specific. And he's also a very direct child, zero filter. You know, yeah. my child, is very, they don't understand that, you know, and he, he's gotten better with it now. But sometimes he could say, you know, um, another example, when he was little, you know, his dad had him in uh, shopping for Christmas and he had the basket and, you know, there's a lady coming by and my son, my son was like, excuse me, old lady. <laughs> 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 she was older, she had gray hair and little glasses, you know, and so my husband's like, Stan. he's like, I'm sorry, he's like, like, you know, so, and of course she didn't say anything, but yeah. And this is just what we know. So I can imagine what has been said when we're not with him and, you know, different reactions. So, you know, it, it's day by day and it's a good day if he's smiling. So that's right. <laughs> so. Do you guys have any like suggestions on how we can help and bring more awareness to these type of topics? Um, I mean, I think one of the biggest things, like we talked about just differences in culture and, you know, the black and brown community and things like that, opposed to other communities. One of, you know, I think with, we talked a bit about, you know, um, um, resources and, you know, things being available and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the um, lack of, of resources and things that we either know about or, or, or that are available to us. Part of it is because, certain communities, you know, they have access, they have a lot more uh, people who've had experiences and, and, and access to, you know, doctors and, and all these things, right? So I think right. it's, it's, it starts here, like what we're doing right now with mm -hmm. us talking about it and you creating YouTube, you know, uh, videos about it, because I think that definitely there is this stigma in our, like we forget autism, a lot of us black and brown can go lay on someone's couch just Anyway, with any, yeah. you know, and, right. and that's just not right. That's just not what we talk about. Mm -hmm. That's that's not normalized. So even starting there and making it more, make it making talking about mental health just as you know easy as like, oh man, my I broke my arm or my arm's hurting. I'm gonna go to the doctor. So even starting backing it up to just that <laughs> is yeah. a good start. Yeah. But yeah, I think just think things like this. Um, other, I mean, not being afraid to talk about it. It's it, it's tough. No yeah. one wants to think yeah. their child is different or anything like that. But you know, and I and Michelle asked me about this podcast. You know, we talked about it once with second. I was like, okay, do I don't I? You know, kind of like where is this going to go? I, you notice I asked you at first. So who? Where is this going? 
<laughs> yeah. Because you, you know, because you, you know, even in, in trying to, to, you know, talk about it more and expose it more and, and, and make it more of a comfortable conversation, it's, you feel a bit of a, a stigma or you don't want, you know, I want to protect my child first thing. And I don't want to like, well, I don't, you know, you just, you have those hesitations. So I do think starting here and having more conversations, um, definitely the first step. Michelle, do you have anything to add? I totally agree. And um, I think Chanel hit the, you know, the nail on the head. And I'm thinking, what would Lincoln Blankston say? <laughs> but um, um, right. especially even things that are not um, clinically diagnosed, like autism or politics or, you know, something, but just mental health, right? Um, sitting on someone's couch, I think is the term that you use. You know, we, we, we try to be our own um, doctor our own pharmacist, our, you know, we try to be our own and, you know, inclusion and, and privacy, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're brought up in homes where you don't tell my business, you don't, you, and, and, and that becomes unfortunately a, a curse um, of, of, of outreach and of remediation, because if I just keep it to myself, maybe I solved it for myself even, but mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, it doesn't reach as far as it can. And we're in a day and age where things like this, 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 this podcast, and whether it's one or 1 million people, that one person has the ability to change it the same way that the 1 million people do. And I just want to add one last thing, you know, on that point of just us talking about, about this, you know, I think also like Rochelle, I mentioned briefly, like last year, um, you know, COVID did a number on everyone, right? Mm -hmm kids being out of school. No, you know, my kid started high school in ninth grade and just got back in the classroom as a junior. He wow. lost a lot of socialization. Um, you know, a lot of things happened over, over the, the quarantine and he went through a lot of mental challenges. Like he mm -hmm. had a super rough time and a lot of people, you know, we don't, I, I'm not shouting off the rooftops. Hey, my kid, you know, had some mental struggle. So the interesting thing around the time that he was going through battles, I had so many other peer, co-workers of different cultures going through this health issue, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and people, we don't want to talk about it. And it's yeah. only, be, it, it's kind of like those sideways conversations that it kind of got out. And then where other people are like, well, you know what? Hey, I'm having some challenges too. I have to do this, I have to do that. So it's not, it, it's, it's mental health is a struggle. I, I'm finding like, even outside of us, it's like, so can, you can imagine what's going on in our community. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think once I was able to talk with others who are going through very similar challenges, it, we had a, um, we could lean on each other mm -hmm. and we're still in touch right now. You know, uh, you know, just how you doing? How's your baby doing? You know, so definitely kudos to you for doing something like this because it's just not, um, it's just not common and it, and it really needs to be, we need to make it like, yeah, I got a doctor's appointment on Tuesday as, as simple as going to the dentist, so. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, and then what do you guys wish to see change within your community or within just everyone in general? Um, I would say the sensitivity. Like for me, the sensitivity, and, and I'm going to use that from both perspectives. One from the sensitivity, being sensitive about what that individual is going through and compassionate. Um, but also, I think a lot of times it's not even just what we say, it's, it's how we say it. So I think um, Chanel used the example, someone said, what's wrong with him, right? And especially because our kids, right, kids are brutal. And when you think about middle school or high school, the adult might understand how to position or to pose that question a little softer, mm -hmm. but a kid that's coming to school doesn't. So if we don't have these conversations at home and we talk about, you know, etiquette, so to speak, then they, they, they go off of what they know. And mm -hmm. so I think sensitivity is something that has to be taught at home to all things um, and embraced. And then, and then as a parent of someone who is um, perhaps directly impacted or inflicted with something that they might not, it might, you know, not be so proud to put it out there for display, be sensitive to the exposure of others because we can only grow if we learn. And mm -hmm. if, if we don't have, if those people 
myself and Chanel not willing to expose ourselves and our families, then we, we can't grow from that unless, unless we have exposure and sensitivity at the same time. I, I, well said, I, I definitely agree. You know, it's, um, like you said, it definitely starts at home. Like you said, that, you know, children not knowing, like, and children are children, I understand, you know, um, but you're right. It's, it's a, a level of lack of understanding of, you know, all that's going on. So I, I don't, I don't know if I have anything to add to that because um, I already mentioned how just, just not being afraid to talk about it is, is huge. And like I said, just, just so happen. I, I found out that other people were going through the same journey. It's like, you know, no matter who you are, you're a mom, you're an aunt, you're a cousin, you know, and everyone feelings are across the board. I don't care who you are. So, you know, just like you said, being sensitive and also being aware and being willing to, to, um, like you said, give that share because it, like I said, it, it, I'm guilty, I, you know, because I think it comes from a place of protection because I know the world. And yeah. it's, I, if I could save him from what's wrong with you, I, mm -hmm. I would, you know, but it's, it's just, it's how the world is. And until we can figure out as, as the adults <laughs> to kind of help steer this, you know, it'll be more the same. But like I said, I think this is a great first step. And then just before we end, do you guys have any last words that you would like to say that you weren't able to say with, um, during the conversation? Uh, wow. Um, yeah, just, you know, again, just like she said, sensitivity, but also patience, you know, mm -hmm. I worry about my child, you know, learning to drive like any other teenager and, you know, the fear of like, you know, someone being mean to him on a road or him going out somewhere by himself and people, you know, you know, not being sensitive to him. You know, if anybody who ever's listening, <laughs> it's like just thinking about that, you know, patience too, because, you know, and patience with ourselves too, because a lot of us, we have a lot to learn. And yeah. I, as a mother, I can't, I, I'll be honest with you. I always feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm not learning enough, but you know, how can I be better? Um, but I, you know, I gotta be easy on myself too. So it's a little bit of patience with everyone and yourself. <laughs> if you're raising a child with autism or special needs or anything, a neurodiverse child, um, you know, give yourself grace too. Don't forget that. And I would just say, you know, follow the title of your show, Listen, Love, Connect. I mean, that's pretty, that's it right there. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. But wait, before you leave, visit and follow these Instagram accounts. Check out my website, exceptionalheroes.com to learn more about my patent pending therapeutic device and to buy some Exceptional Heroes merch. Always remember to listen, love, connect. Bye.